What's up guys, Mike here, and today's video is all about buyer challenges in this hot market. Buying a home today is no easy task. While mortgage rates are nice and competitive, there's a major shorting of property listings that's making today's market very tough to navigate. Not only are buyers being forced to compromise on home features, but they're being forced to pay a premium just to get a home. As a general rule, whenever a commodity is short in supply and demand for it is high, the prices tend to go up. And such is the case of today's housing market. Home prices have soared on a national level, which is making it very difficult for home buyers to qualify for a mortgage to cover the high costs of home ownership. But these aren't the only challenges that buyers are facing. Some buyers may have a hard time getting their offers accepted. And it's not because their offers aren't high enough. It has to do with what the sellers are looking for. Not because the offers aren't high enough, but because the sellers aren't happy with the types of financing that those offers are tied to. Welcome to my channel, guys. If you're new here, I make videos about real estate and personal finance. So if you're into that sort of thing, go ahead and hit that like button for me and click the subscribe button as I post videos here weekly on my channel. In today's video, we're gonna cover the disadvantages of VA and FHA loans, what sellers are looking for, and what you can do about it as a buyer. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll share with you my 17 point PDF on how to get your offers accepted as a buyer in today's competitive market. So I don't wanna bore you guys with all the details, but let's just say the VA loan was founded in 1944 and it was designed to help veterans at the time who were active duty to be able to buy a home. Pro loan program has gone through a lot of modifications in the decades since then. But generally speaking today, anyone active duty, reservist, um, National Guard, or a retired veteran that has a honorable discharge can qualify to use a VA loan to purchase a home. There are a lot of benefits to the VA loan, but that is actually going to be for another video, so stay tuned for that. The FHA loan was created to facilitate home financing, improve housing standards, and to jumpstart the home construction industry in the wake of the Great Depression. And while these two loan programs were designed to help people afford housing, coupled with the fact that government is involved in these loans in terms of the financing or guaranteeing the financing of these loans, creates a lot of extra standards. And these standards create disadvantages for home buyers using these loan products in a competitive market like we have today. So the very loan programs that the government created to help people afford and get home ownership is actually a disadvantage to them in a market like we have today. So guys, there are two major reasons why a seller may not want to accept an offer from a buyer that's financing that home purchase with an FHA or VA loan. Both of these have to do with strict guidelines that are enforced by the FHA backed loan or the VA backed loan. The first one is appraisal. So for example, if the home is appraised for less than the agreed on price, the seller must reduce the price to match the appraisal price or the deal will fall through. With a conventional loan, if the appraisal comes in less than the agreed sales price, the seller actually has room to negotiate that with the, with the buyer and the buyer has the opportunity to bring in money or the seller can reduce the price up to, you know, whatever amount that they agree on, um, which is a lot more flexibility for them than a VA loan or an FHA loan. The other problem with this is that say they do decide not to reduce their price to the appraisal price and the buyer walks away or the seller cancels the deal, that appraisal sticks with that property for 120 days. So now that they have to go back, relist their home, start the clock all over again, and now every buyer's agent is going to see that FHA appraisal come up on the, on the property and they're gonna use that as a negotiating tactic against the, sell, the listing agent and the seller when they make offers because now that they have that appraisal in there. So it's a huge disadvantage to a seller to wanna to take an FHA or VA loan knowing that that appraisal is gonna be tagged to that property for up to 120 days. Another disadvantage to the FHA, or FHA loans is that FHA loans have strict guidelines when it comes to repairs and appraisers for FHA look for certain things and that could create headaches in the deal because the seller will then have to address those repairs and issues and make those changes or the deal will fall through um, with no appraisal contingency. Some of the most common defects when it comes to an FHA loan are homes built prior to 1978 must have all chipping or peeling paint scraped off and repainted. Safety handrails must be installed on staircases with three or more steps. Appliances, floor coverings, and the roof must have at least two years left of serviceable use. Large cracks or trips in the concrete have to be addressed and repaired. The windows cannot be broken and they must function properly. 
the property must have running water, electricity, and working heating and cooling systems. VA loans carry the same issues with them as well, and that creates a disadvantage for VA loan home buyers. Most of the similar things, and including zero down payment, is a disadvantage because in a deal, if you're going against another buyer that has a large down payment, they have more skin in the game, so they look like a more serious buyer than say a VA buyer with zero down payment. Also with a VA loan, the sellers are stuck paying the VA funding fee, which sometimes can be a decent amount of money and there's no getting around that. The seller actually has to pay for that. So that's a disadvantage too if they're looking at some other offers that aren't VA. Also another disadvantage to VA loans and FHA loans, FHA loans typically take about 30 to 45 days to close. VA loans can be 30 to 48 days to close. So the, the period of time that the seller is waiting for the sale to take place can really drag on and create stressful situations. Whereas another loan type, maybe a conventional loan or cash, um, can be a much faster close sometimes a week to two weeks. So that's a huge disadvantage for FHA and VA loan buyers. So what are sellers looking for? Above all else, sellers are looking for certainty. They want to know that who they go under contract with has the financial capabilities um, to be able to close the transaction and get to the closing table. They wanna get the most money possible in the least amount of time with the least amount of headaches in the transaction. So some of the key points that sellers are looking for is purchase price. What's the true value of their home versus what you can't afford? The seller obviously wants to make the most, the buyer wants to pay the least, but at some point in there, there's going to be a valuation, um, usually done by an appraiser, that will determine the fair market value of that home. Knowing that you have a purchase price that's uh, competitive versus other offers um, will help you in getting your offer accepted. Sellers are also looking at if you're asking for any seller assistance. If they have five offers that don't have any seller assistance and you're asking for them to pay closing costs and you're asking them to provide you with a brand new home warranty and you're asking them to um, maybe leave some appliances or something like that, that can really hurt you in uh, getting your offer accepted when other people aren't asking for those things. Next is down payment. The amount of down payment you bring to the table shows the seller that you're either very serious or you're maybe not so serious. And if you have a small down payment compared to someone who has maybe a larger down payment, they got more skin in the game. They look like a more qualified buyer. So the seller is most likely going to be more attracted to that offer um, because they just come across as more serious. Also with FHA and VA, there's sometimes limitations to what you can put down. Obviously sellers are looking at financing, which is the point of this video. So if you're up against offers that are cash, that are waiving all their contingencies, they're waiving inspection contingency, uh, appraisal contingency, and they are flexible in their closing date, things like that, that can really make their offer look much better than yours. If you're an FHA or a VA buyer and you have to have an inspection done, then you're gonna have a request for repairs, and then you're gonna have, um, assuming you get through all of that, then you're going to have a uh, financing contingency as well, um, and then an appraisal. So there's lots of extra steps with that that some sellers just don't wanna deal with. And if they're looking at a cash or maybe a, a conventional offer that's got a hefty down payment of 20% and they're waiving some of those things, it's gonna be very tough to try to be competitive, you know, compete with that um, when you're dealing with an FHA or VA loan. Other contingencies is something sellers are looking for in contracts. And what do I mean by this? Well, any contingency that your buyer's agent puts in the contract that you submit to the seller on your behalf is essentially viewed upon as an out by the listing agent and by the seller. So that means that if you put more contingencies in there, that just gives the seller an idea that, hey, anything goes wrong and you're looking for a quick out to get out, get your earnest money back and get out of the transaction. So that creates more uncertainty the more contingencies that you have. And that's not something that a seller or a listing agent is looking for in an offer. So the less contingencies you have in your offer, that will definitely increase your chances of having your offer either looked at or accepted um, when it's looked at upon other offers that maybe have a lot of contingencies in them. Another one that sellers look at is home inspection. Um, these days in this highly competitive market, there's a lot of things being waived. If your offer requires a home inspection versus maybe another offer that's the same price but doesn't require a home inspection, that offer is probably gonna get more consideration than yours. So depending on what type of home you're buying. If you can afford to waive the home inspection in this market, it's advisable to do so. In a normal market, I would say absolutely not. Um, but again, 
um, you have that flexibility with cash and with some conventional loans. You don't have that flexibility to waive home inspections when you're dealing with a government insured backed loan such as a FHA or a VA loan. They require those, those things to happen. So that's not a negotiating piece. So that's gonna make your offer less desirable in a seller's eyes. Another thing sellers look at is settlement date. So a seller's looking at their timeline and when they wanna be out of that house and where they gotta to go to. Maybe they're buying another house, maybe they're traveling, who knows. But if you make an offer but your offer is contingent on your property going under contract and you can't give a clear settlement date, that shows a lot of uncertainty and that will probably put your offer at the bottom of their pile. Um, as opposed to other offers that might come in that they don't have any, any contingency with another purchase or another sale, they have the cash in, in, in hand in the bank and they're verified and vetted by the lender and they're ready to buy, that's gonna be a much more attractive offer even if they're offering less money than what you are because what they are guaranteeing the seller is a guaranteed timeline of when they're gonna settle and close the deal, which you aren't able to do. So that carries a lot of weight as well. So what can you do to be more competitive even though you're buying a home with an FHA or VA loan in this market? There's several things that you can do and I'm gonna give you guys my, my top five right now and then be sure to stick around for that PDF bonus. So the first thing that you can do is you can offer an escalation clause in your, in your offer. What does this mean? This means that in the event of a bidding war, you can put in some language that says, if, you know, if, if it's between my offer and another offer and they are $1,000 more, I'll match that 1,000 and go up 500. And then if the next offer comes in, then I'll jump them $1,000 as well. And you can have an, what's called an auto escalate clause built into your contract, which will keep you in the running in the event of a bidding war. Another tactic you can do to make your offer more attractive is you can offer the seller a lease back. What this does is this allows the seller to stay in the property, which guarantees them certainty up until the point of closing or wh whatever date you guys set forth for them to vacate the property. This gives the seller a lot more confidence and it shows that you're a flexible buyer and you're willing to conform to their terms and timeline. So that can create a huge advantage for you uh, as if other competition and other offers aren't doing that. Another tactic that you can use is you can include an appraisal gap clause in your offer. What this means is basically if the home uh, was, let's say the agreed sales price was 300 and the appraisal came back at 280, well that seller doesn't wanna take a $20,000 hit if they have other offers at 300 that can pay the 300, but now you're, they know that you're an FHA or VA and your financing will only pay what the appraisal came back at, you have to have funds to come out of pocket to cover that gap if you are able to do that based on the type of financing you have. Um, but if you have the funds in, in your bank account, you could cover that $20,000 and put that clause in there that says, hey, in the event of a gap, I'll, that's in a negative fashion, I will cover that amount and we can still keep this deal alive. So that will really help a lot too versus other offers that don't have this clause. Number four, you can offer more earnest money. Um, typically when you offer more earnest money, it shows you got more skin in the game because the earnest money deposit is, is the, depending on who backs out and at what point in the contract, um, that's at risk. Um, if, if the buyer does not perform or the buyer pulls out um, before a finance contingency or something of that matter, uh, the seller by, by contract can actually keep that earnest money deposit. So if you have a good large deposit, that just shows you're more serious and want to go through with the transaction because you have more at risk. So that's a good thing that sellers look for. Um, number five is actually using a local reputable lender. So when you present an offer to a listing agent, that listing agent is going to review that offer with the seller and they're going to and if they're an agent that's been around in the business for a while, they're gonna know most of the lenders and know which lenders can get the deals done and which lenders, um, and especially if they don't know who the, your lender is and they don't have a reputable track record, it's not gonna hold as much weight as if they know, you know, another offer is going with Joe down the street that they've done 100 deals with and they know that that guy can close and they know how he works. So that comes into play very heavily once it comes time to looking at offers and reviewing. So you wanna make sure you use a local, local reputable lender I would not advise going with any of the big box um, national lenders because they're very hard to reach. And when a deal goes sideways in the 11th hour and your agent needs to reach the lender to find out about 
a change in debt to income ratio or something that popped up on a credit report that's got to be fixed really quick it can be very daunting to try to reach those types of companies and get an answer. Whereas if you've got a local lender, you can go in there in person or you can send an email or make a phone call. You usually get them on the phone right away and get those matters handled quickly and efficiently and keep the deal alive. So that matters a lot. And that's something sellers look for and offers for sure. Other than that, guys, stick around. I'll shoot it down in my description and I'll share with you my PDF that you can get. Um, all I ask is just give me a subscribe and hit that like button and click the notification bell as I post more videos here weekly. Again, this is Mike. Thanks for sticking around and I will see you on the next one.